Ah, Queenstown. It's one of our favourite places in the world, not just in New Zealand. Even after travelling for three years full time, like this is still one of our favourite places ever. It's also the adventure capital of the world. <laughs> Has arguably the best burger money can buy, home to one of the most recognisable hot tubs, some of the best postcard-like landscape views in our little paradise, and perhaps more than all of that, there's a really welcoming and cool vibe in what looks like a European ski town. But today's not about Queenstown, it's about its often overlooked and super unique brother down the road. I think Arrowtown has to be one of the most unique places in New Zealand. Arrowtown is an old gold mining town that perhaps more than anywhere else in New Zealand has kept true to its roots. Close to 160 years after first finding gold, it still feels like a small mining community with incredible wine. Ooh, what's happening? That comes from an adult vending machine. There you go. Cool. Get every last drop, okay? Exactly. And cheese too. Lots of cheese. But the sad news is we've come to the end and this is the very last episode in our Reveal NZ camper van road trip. So along with checking out Arrowtown, we're also swapping out our 7.2 meter camper van for a 2 meter toy car and upgrading our bunk bed sleeping for an absolutely luxurious stay at the Lake Hayes Cottages. Today's a little bit of a bittersweet day. We absolutely love Queenstown, so we've saved as much time as we can, a few days anyway, to enjoy our time here. But we always had planned that we would have to pack up our lives and, and say goodbye <laughs> to our camper van, Aston. He has done us so well. I really did think that we would have some issues along the way. Absolute champ. So we've picked up a Toyota Yaris and somehow, I do not know how, we've managed to cram our entire lives, Four including suitcases. like blenders and all sorts of <laughs> <laughs> in the back. How have we got five weeks worth of belongings in this in small Yaris. little Yaris? Go Yaris, go! It's insane. But we wanted to make sure that before we left Queenstown, we, we saved some space to go out on a bit of a bang, didn't we? Yeah, we have some luxury coming up for the next two nights. There's been a couple of changes with things happening with coronavirus, so we were like, you know what, who knows when we're going to be able to go travelling again. Let's make the most of it and... Go large. Go large. So we've been to Queenstown a handful of times and have literally never ever come to Lake Hayes. As soon as you get off that main road, it is just so peaceful and amazing so out quiet. here. I love it. And the, the lake as we came down over that hill with the reflection up over to the mountains, we've got the remarkables are close by, like the views here. We're just stunning. Every direction you look in there's something eh? We're just right down the basin, but we gotta get inside. You gotta go have a look. I already peeked the doors I've open. Notice that. Why is the door <laughs> open? So we're staying in hope. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, oh. wow, 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 wow. I don't know which direction to go in. It's uh, all amazing. Left. Go left. Go Is left. It? <gasps> Such nice touches. <laughs> and that is always that is always a winner. Oh. Gotta unlock it. So this is Lake Hayes. The main road runs right past it, so we've driven past this lake a lot of times and appreciated the view, but had no idea that these cottages were here. But we did know we did know about a walk, which we might consider doing. It's eight kilometers that goes around the entire lake. I've seen some people out here, they look like they're almost like floating through the bush there, so there must be some kind of a walkway. Um, yeah, eight kilometers, two to three hours. We'll see how we're feeling, but I think we might, we might wine and dine for these last few days because we're probably closer to Arrowtown at this point about 10 to 15 minutes back to Queenstown and Akarua, which is one of our favorite spots, is just around the road. And then also Amersfield is, I think, literally just over on the hill over there as well. Modern, but it's still got lots of character. Yeah. I really like this. The owners who, one of them we just met, who's Kirsty, whoa, 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 yeah. um, oh, have close. lived and worked all around the world. So there's some influence from the UK from Asia and a little bit from New Zealand as well. What oh. a, this is such a great space. You can definitely tell all the little touches ah, of scorn. Scorn. I love seeing tartan around. Little kitchen too. Well, not quite a little kitchen. There's a there's a stove. Nespresso. 
our favourite. There's another bedroom, two bedrooms, and two en suites as well. This one looks a little bit bigger. Maybe. Living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should go for a bit of a wander down to Lake Hayes. Yeah, we'll see. What I'm not committing to the full no. <laughs> spare two to three hours. The steel, by the way, that wasn't me. <laughs> Normally, the um, like a spa by itself is good enough, but sitting here and having a view that helps. I mean, this this helps as well. But. <laughs> a few episodes back, we gave this trip its own hashtag. What's your thoughts on the snow? I thought I thought it would be snowier. Mm. I think that's the tagline for this whole trip. <laughs> Hashtag expected more snow. <laughs> so waking up to some ice was probably more exciting than it should have been. Just 10 minutes up the road is Arrowtown, a place with endless charm. It sits in the Arrow Basin, which was carved by the great glaciers of ages past. Gold was first found in 1862, leading to a massive influx of gold hunters from around the world and an eventual boom in the area. Year round, there's only about 2,000 people that actually live in Arrowtown, but given how unique the town is and how true to the gold mining days of old, it's a popular spot for tourism and somewhere we've never actually filmed before. I think Arrowtown has to be one of the most unique places in New Zealand. I think that it's a bold statement, but I can't. I think I stand by it. Yeah, and you know it, I mean? it's because you kind of feel like you've stepped back in time a little bit. Eh? Yeah, the tradition is alive and well. We've just wandered down to the river here. I feel like we could collect gold and just take it back up there and sell it someplace. Yeah, for a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I think the difference with Arrowtown is that it feels really authentic and it doesn't feel super tacky. You know, a lot of places that are built for tourism are you know, they're like rebuilt and I know what you mean, yeah. they end up looking a little bit like a tourist playground. Whereas like this you could be at a theme park sort exactly, of thing. Exactly, that's what I'm trying to say. But this, it just feels like you just happen to be visiting an old school town. Yeah, if you actually compare the photos from what it used to look like and what it looks like now, it is very much the same, quite isn't similar, it? Yeah. yeah. So but that does mean that though that it's it's kept quite simple as well. It hasn't developed out into this enormous city. It's pretty much one street, and on the back half of that is this bit up here, which has a few shops and stuff as well. But um, the main street is the one that you really get that that that, that gold vibe. mining vibe yeah. from. So cool through here, isn't it? It's beautiful. But all the buildings, they're all so different, but they all just like work together so well. My designer brain is like <laughs> going off. Do you think there must be some kind of restrictions or there must be like... Like heritage rules Yeah, there must like be that. rules as yeah. to what you can do because most of these buildings have kept their, their design and their yeah. shape. There's a little bit of modern stuff added in there. But for the most part, it's all old school. Yeah, I like that um, some of them actually have at the top of the building as well when it was established and who buy. Yes. We don't even have to catch the gold, babe. We can buy some. Uh, we can catch buy it gold. ourselves. Catch the gold like it's fish. <laughs> I just stumbled upon these lockets that have flakes of gold inside. And then there's this one down here. Dane's like, that's the one that you can have. It's $20. <laughs> How much do you reckon's in there? Uh, a gram. <laughs> if that. So it's crazy to see that that's the value now. In 1863 was the first time that they took a massive haul out of here and it was 340 kilograms worth of gold. I don't know how much it sold for at that stage, but in today's market, that's 18 million dollars. <laughs> well, you can be wanted. 
How do you give back there? Five hundred dollar reward. They don't value you much, do they? Wow, it's so rude. <laughs> So we were looking for a place that we could get some wine and a cheese board and we've stumbled across this spot and I actually probably need to explain this to you, don't I? Yeah, I have no idea what's happening. Okay, so, so the way that it works is these machines everywhere, right? So this one is Riesling and I can't pronounce that and others. And then there's Pinot Noir and there's all sorts of other stuff around. You get given a glass, I've put down a credit card, which then means I've got this card. And so at the top of the machine, Blue, you can insert your card. So if I do that, I don't know which way to do it. Wait, which one do we want? Well, no, you don't have to do it yet. Just, I'll show you. So you insert the card. It says, so it says balance zero because we haven't done our drinkings yet. But what we then can do, so you see the little number. So yeah. you've got small, medium and large. So the small is the taster. So that's $2.90. That's $7.90 for a half glass and $14.30 for a full glass. So apparently that reasoning, if you want something sweet, take a moth, I think. Totally. She said, is really really good we and, try? Then, and then yes yeah, we try it with that one yeah okay, should we do it now yeah so so what i just put yeah you there. want to put it to there yeah and then the cards in and then you want to press just yeah. do a taster right eh? yeah ready yeah oh, what's happening <sighs> there you go cool get every last drop okay exactly so this is a central otago coconut local you don't like them. She was not lying. It kind of tastes like a dessert wine. <laughs> oh yeah, but less syrupy so you can drink way more of it. <laughs> the more you walk around to the sake and stuff there as well, so you can see like this international, which is the smallest of the stock in here. I'm completely overwhelmed with options. There's literally two, I think, I think there's two. <laughs> I've just been wandering around aimlessly, but I think I'm going to try something, some kind of red. I'm a little bit picky on making sure that it's not like too spicy or anything, so fortunately there's notes that I can actually read. Yeah, something a little more mellow, something a little bit more chill, and then we've got ourselves a cheese board as well, which is a great touch. Uh, so we got uh, bread, crackers, chutney, oils, dukkha, you can have these ones, the blue cheeses. <laughs> I'm a bit annoyed that the honey is right up against this blue, so I'm going to have to navigate my way around that. I think there's like quince and fruit. I'm patiently waiting for Danger to um, pick his wine so that I can dig into this. I've been sitting here for a good five minutes just staring at it. <laughs> Finally made a decision. Went for the Ted. <laughs> the, the pretty much all local wine, so I went for the Ted by Mount Edward, which is a um, Pinot Noir. Dark cherry, but has some sweetness to it. But this is just thanks to that absolute banger from Chris Isaac playing in the background. Copyright went nuts over this scene. So enjoy our very first dubbed vlog. <laughs> A cool experience. Absolute fluke as well, to be honest, because our plans got changed really, didn't they? We were supposed to go somewhere else, it was fully booked. We wanted to go to Amsterdam, but now there's the COVID rule coming in place, there's all sorts of restrictions, so. Yeah, but this is cool because you get to try lots of different wines and I don't know, it's just, uh, just, just like a picnic, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit. The fact that we're in just the, like a, an adult, what did you say, like a vending machine heaven, basically, with cheese. <laughs> and we just accidentally stood outside and we're like, looks okay in here, should we walk in? And this is where the emotional eating started because sadly this was the end of the road. We decided to switch off, relax with no technology, and enjoy our last night of the trip with some snacks by the fire. The next day made for an interesting flight from Queenstown to Auckland with masks and all the COVID rules in place. It was our first time on a plane since February. Well, I mean other than this place. Welcome to one of the world's coolest McDonald's. <laughs> it's such a weird thing to say out loud, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It was a surreal experience reflecting back on what life used to be. We used to roam free, explore wherever our hearts desired, be confronted with new experiences daily, travel on a whim, at times too quickly, and perhaps even take it all for granted in moments. We're blessed to be back home and fortunate to travel domestically, to share those experiences with you, and we are beyond proud of this series of videos we've created. Wow. 
the extra editing time, the longer length of the videos, the love and the details and the planning was all worth it when we see your comments come through, so thank you for that. But more than anything, seeing New Zealand from the sky was a beautiful final reminder of just how special this place really is. So, what's next for us? If you're on our email list, you likely already have some idea, but you'll just have to wait and see. Thank you.